I'm so tapped up and welcome back to Monument Valley 2. Yesterday, Ida kind of learned how to handle things on her own. We might know how such a thing could go wrong in the future due to playing the previous game. Let me ask you, oh god, I love these, these intro screens, are so nice. Um, trying to open every video with a comment, and I'm, t I'm, I'm pointing that out because I'm trying to remind myself, not you. Jeez, the use of gradients in this game is so good. Look at that. Look at the implied night. Just not with actual darkness or shadow at all, really. Just kind of the colors, the shading. I'm a big sucker for stuff like that. Um, anyway. Comet is a bit personal and specific this time. What do you think of the mouse cursor being here? Um, do you enjoy that in this playthrough or not? I'm a little torn on it because it kind of... See, I'm dragging here, and if you didn't see the mouse cursor, you couldn't tell that. Now, it doesn't do anything on this level, but... Personally, I figured I should have the mouse cursor to kind of let you see what I'm doing. That's right, Parker. Oh, some beautiful, like, Venice. This can be I never played, um, that second, um, Dishonored game. I was actually pretty annoyed at Bethesda at the time. They didn't... They, did, they were doing some screwery with review copies, and it's not relevant to this video, but, uh... Uh, I'm pretty good at boycotting because you know what, I um, I play games very late anyway, so I I boycott everything on accident. I, Ida, whoa 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 whoa. Oh. Bye. Okay. <laughs> what? Uh, wasn't expecting that. I love the dramatic swell of the music though, and that pan down to just the empty water to kind of. Uh, I, the show the isolation. Complete? That was the whole level? Huh. I love unusual things like this. It draws so much attention. It draws so much attention to it. With the tiny little level. I actually love stuff like that. Um, I'm now wondering if people are gonna get mad at me again saying I'm enjoying a video game too much. I don't wanna to harp too much on that, but that, <laughs> that cracked me up. I think it was um Wonder Boy and the Lizards and the and the Dragon's Curse, yeah. The remake of that. Somebody got just genuinely mad. Like I mean you get the you like the game, I get it, jeez. I don't think I was being too crazy gushing, but I was definitely being a bit like this game, I was like, dang, this is good. The towers. There remain other pursuits for the heart. The stark colors. Ooh, and the staticiness. Got a definite vibe of being alone. I like stuff like this. You can call it ham-fisted if you want. I think... Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, it only has two orientations, I guess. They should have a Klein bottle in this game. That should be a thing. Oh, that wouldn't work anyway. Okay. Um, I like when symbolism is kind of stark and upfront. I think people tend to miss stuff if it's too subtle, or if you, I honestly, one of the worst things to me is to leave it up to interpretation. I never liked that kind of stuff. Um, maybe for like an ending or something, but I don't like, it feels like a cop-out to me if you make it too va vague, honestly. I, I personally think, kind of to what I was saying in the last video, stick to your convictions. If you, if you're trying to make a political point or something, make it, make it obvious. In fact, I like that in, um, I was talking about Kojima last video and how, oh, just, just be genuine, dude. Just admit you like stuff. Just make a game about stuff. Um. Death Stranding had its own problems. Um, I actually don't dislike that it was very ridiculously blunt at some times in its kind of political message and stuff. Um, I think it's better to be blunt and be understood than to be vague and people will be like, oh, maybe it's about this, maybe it's about that. And it's like, it wasn't about that and it's totally <laughs> misinterpreted. Like, it can be interesting. It can be like, oh, people draw their own conclusions, but... Sometimes you just want to say a thing, and I think you should just say it. I think you should just be honest and upfront. And I... Subtlety, I think, is overrated in some ways. Sometimes it's good to hit the nail on the head. Honestly, I think... 
I don't want to get too political here, but things, things lately in po politics, things, sometimes things are more stark in reality than they are in fiction. You wouldn't be allowed to do a lot of things that have happened in real politics lately in fiction. People would be like, oh no, that's 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 too blatant. That's too ridiculous. No, no, that's that's too that's pushing an agenda. It's like sometimes real life is just that wacky. Anyway, sometimes it feels like nothing has changed. Everything is different. Separate paths can still be part of the same journey. Your journey is one that must continue. Thanks, Ancestor. Beam me up, Scotty. One of the weirdest things, looking back to Star Trek and stuff, not thinking that portable computers would be a thing. That's so weird. Why would computers not get smaller? Why would, why would their communicators just be like basic radios? It's so weird. Like nobody can predict the future at all. But it just seems weird that the, the the rise of mobile devices just was not by all seen by almost anyone. Like space, we can assume stuff about space travel and stuff and replicating. Ooh, colors! Welcome to my Mirror's Edge Let's Play. Holy crap! Whoa. That is a stark viewing angle. Whoa. I love stuff like this when you see stuff at a different angle than you've seen things before. Uh, that's why I love Fez, right? Um, by the way, why haven't we done Fez on this channel? I guess it's slightly long, but let me tell you about Fez. Uh, I... Whoa. That's weird. Um, I liked Fez so much, I got the Platinum Trophy for that within 24 hours. I just sat on the couch and I just played Fez, like, all day. Loved it. Fantastic game. Um... Phil Fish himself um, can be a bit of a problem, but hey, sometimes sometimes crappy people make good stuff. It, it's a lesson that kind of sucks to learn, and it's there's no obvious answer of oh, should I should is it still okay to enjoy it? Is it still okay to enjoy the work, the whole death of the author thing? But uh, I liked Fez. That's all I can say about that right now. Maybe we'll stream it someday. It's a bit long for a let's play like this. But, um, did really like it. Push the button. Did you hear that static in the music? Very stark. Very... <laughs> it almost has kind of a vaporwave vibe to it, doesn't it? The slowness of the music. I honestly think I... <laughs> I'm not even memeing here, but I honestly feel like Vaporwave is a better aesthetic and like really good. I think Vaporwave is just actually good for the most part. I mean, is it memey? Yes. Is it kind of easy to do? I'll admit, yes. There's not an incredible amount of variety, but it does have a genuinely good vibe and visual aesthetic to it. Um, I, I've always pretty unironically enjoyed it. It really is a good vibe. And I, I kind of wish more games would do stuff with Vaporwave, not necessarily just a jokey vibe. I like that title. Oh, huh? Oh, you have to make it so complicated. You have to make it a certain amount of complexity. That's the deal, I guess. We're making flowers now. See, flower, flowers grow, you know, geometrically, so it's that's why it's so easy to do this. That's The flowers are kind of growing based on this principle of uh, symmetry and everything. of symmetry and fractals and stuff. Um, mathematics and physics and stuff can be very beautiful. I never understood, not to get too deep into a religious argument here, uh, that's definitely not what I want in the comments, but I never understood people that are like, oh, the world is beautiful, mysterious, and you science types, it ruins everything. You gotta have mystery in life. I'm like, what? No, no, understanding things makes them so much more impressive. Understanding what makes a flower grow it doesn't take the magic away. It makes it so much more interesting. Um, understanding life and things makes them so much more magical to me. Uh, just thinking, oh, everything was just pooped out by some magical man with a beard. Um, that, to me, feels like that is greatly underestimating everything. Even if you are religious, I think, and just assuming God is real, I think is very ridiculous to just be like, oh, 
God made all of this stuff, all of this incredibly complex stuff. Let's not look into it. Let's not see what makes all of this stuff work. Because to me, that's like your friend making you this beautiful puzzle. And you're just like, oh, that's neat. And you just look at it. And like, there's all of this stuff to be solved and moved around and see how it all works. And you just don't want to mess with it. That's not showing respect to your friend that made this beautiful thing for you. You're, you're, you're you know, whether there is a God or not, I don't think that matters in terms of whether we should look, you know, investigate things scientifically. I think it's, I, I think just you have to do that. It makes the world so much more interesting to me. Anyway, Apelion. Apelion? I'm not entirely sure how that's pronounced. That was, I hate, I hate being the one person talking because it's so easy to be like, no, it's wrong, yep, yep. Because you're, you're not the one on the line. Anyway, in which Roe visits an old friend. Hopefully. Hopefully I managed to make... Oh, look at that. See, I love sometimes the, 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 the starkness. The, it, obviously, it's about, you know, distance and ho the whole we're separated from Roe and stuff. Sometimes you need subtle... You don't need... Let's see the colors coming in. I've, I find symbolism can be... <gasps> totem! Sorry. <laughs> I like totem. I don't know if you could tell. Um, sometimes I, I like symbolism that people can actually get. I don't like, like, oh, well, if you understood the symbolism in 18th century Croatia, you would know that looking at this particular flower symbolizes bean curds. And it's like, no one's going to get that. Well, I, I, I don't think that's... Oops. It was like that when I got here. Oop, oops, oh. Oops. Um. <laughs> um. I think being understood trumps being, oh, I'm subtle. That makes me more genius. No. If people don't get what you were writing about, that, that doesn't mean you were smarter than them. That means you didn't communicate well. I prefer things that communicate well. Just because you use symbolism, if nobody gets what it means, it wasn't good writing. I have to say that. I, And that's why I don't... I, I value subtlety a lot less than a lot of people do. I, I talked about that before, so we don't need to get into it again. But um, that little background. Is that the next area we're going to see? Probably is. Uh-oh. Is that a tyrant? No. Oh, I see. There we go. Oh no, it's just stuff in the background. I actually really like that. So, one thing in games that always um, I really liked is when games show that the um, that the world is kind of more than what you see. That there's there's other things. Oh, I see. That there's more going on in the world. It's not just this tiny little area. There's more stuff. I always thought Kirby did that very well. Um, and sometimes I want to be in that background world. Sometimes I want to see more of that stuff. But how do I... Oh! Superstar a little bit. I just haven't known what to play, and um, it's a classic. I I can always go back to, and um, the backgrounds in that game are really beautiful. 
fact, I would love a Kirby game where you just you play on the backgrounds of prior games. It's so cool. Let me find uh, uh, what's the golf game's name? Uh, Dream Course. Backgrounds. I think I've shown this exactly before in a video, but it's so beautiful. Let me just bring this up. I kind of have almost this Monument Valley vibe to them, honestly. But look at these. Like skip there. Th thanks, Jigglypuff Girl, for for the rip, by the way. Um, but yeah, look at these. Just I want to go there. I want to be there. Especially the, the windmills and the clouds. The beautiful forest. The ice cream land. <laughs> the Lego zone. Oh, especially the moon one. That's beautiful. <laughs> Back to that video game we were playing. All he is is another brick in the wall. I love the little chain suspended thingy. Alright, so what is the deal here? So... But but I can't get on that. Hmm. Can I walk on? Oh, okay. I thought for some reason I thought you couldn't walk on the dots. I never feel too lost in this game, and I really appreciate that, especially for doing a video. Because I'm doing this all totally blind. I mean, I played the first two levels, but those were super easy, and they uh, didn't really... Interesting. Um, they, um, they would have been super easy anyway. Um, You go up the pole once, now go up pole the other way. No? Okay. I thought I was being smart for a second, but perhaps not. Get on now. Just when I was talking about, oh, I, I never get stuck in Monument Valley, haha. Now I'm stuck in Monument Valley. side of totem. I feel like it's got to have something to do with this, but I don't know how I could possibly... Interesting. You know what? We're getting close to our time. This will be the first time that we stop off in the middle of the level ever. I'm sorry for that. 
But uh, I'm getting a little bit stuck, and we need to end the video anyway. I am Sir Tap Tap. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to, if you like the video, leave a like and a comment. I hate to say that, but it it does matter. Unfortunately enough, I do have one. I do have one idea though. Wait, how do I get back? All right, no, no tap tap. We're gonna have to do this in a bit. I'm Sir Tap Tap. Thanks for watching.